Hi everyone, it's time for another notebook walkthrough. Um, in the previous notebook walkthrough, I talked about the normal equation, how we solved it, uh, and the basic setup for uh, multilinear regression. Um, in this notebook, I want to walk through how we more typically solve these problems using scikit-learn. I'm also going to spend some time uh, actually visualizing the regression model and give a bit, a bit of a better understanding of the importance of this uh, ones vector, this uh, constant term in our model. Uh, this notebook also has a bit more uh, you know, entertaining uh, three-dimensional visualizations. Um, I, I want to introduce a synthetic data set because it will become a bit more interesting as we start to talk about uh, future engineering. Um, the other hope in this notebook is you'll get some experience with scikit-learn and, and the basic uh, design of scikit-learn models so that uh, you can try more advanced models in the future. All right, so as before, I'm going to import the standard stuff. I discussed this in the previous walkthrough, so I won't do that. Um, I'm going to import scikit-learn's uh, linear regression package, or linear regression model. I'll actually re-import this later and talk a bit more about it then. Um, I'm going to import the YouTube uh, embedding. I will uh, put this video at the beginning of this notebook so you can watch the video and then uh, walk the notebook yourself. So I've created a data set uh, that's a bit more interesting than uh, our standard data sets. It's going to have two feature dimensions, so x1 and x2. Um, and one response variable. Um, these are entirely made up data, so there's no units or meaning to these variables. Um, but in a, in, a, in a moment, you'll get to see what it looks like, uh, and, and then we can talk about how we'll fit it. All right, so this is what the data looks like. All right, so I've made a, a 3D visualization. So you should take these data for a spin so we get to see this data. Uh, it looks kind of like the data lives on some kind of plane. So notice I'll have, uh, I have x1 and x2 are my, my features, and then I have this response z dimension I've plotted here. Uh, just to be clear what's going on, I'm using this 3D scatter plot where I've set the x uh, and y coordinate of each point to be x1 and x2. Um, and then I've set the z coordinate to be the response y variable that we're ultimately going to try to predict. <laughs> All right, so that's our data. And I'm actually not going to walk through this part of the notebook. This is from before. Um, so this is our, our least squares model, uh, the solutions to our least squares model using the linear algebra libraries. I, I just want to briefly apply these functions to give you an idea of how we would do this again before we use the scikit-learn package. And then I want to show you how we do it using the scikit-learn uh, regression package. All right, so as before, we pull out our, our matrices. Uh, our x matrix is going to have two columns, x1 and x2. And our y matrix is just one column with the y values. Uh, I can use either of these two functions to estimate the, uh, the uh, coefficients of x1 and x2 of this model. Uh, and they turn out to produce the same result because uh, they're solving the same problem. All right, so they both agree. Uh, we can now take these, these parameters that are estimated, this is our theta hat for our model, uh, and we can plug it in, and we actually uh, can visualize what this, this predicted model looks like. Uh, to, since we're going to visualize it multiple times, I've written a little function called plot plane. Let me actually walk you through what this function does. Um, you don't really need to know, but uh, it might be helpful if you want to do visualization for yourself in the future. Um, so what, in order to make a plot of a, of a function um, in this two-dimensional space, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to uh, essentially take my function, this is my model, um, and I'm going to want to evaluate that model on a, a regular grid of, of points, so a regular grid of values for the x1 and uh, x2 uh, features. And the way I'll do that is I use the linspace package to create uh, a, a, a set of uh, grid points. So I'll take 30 grid points, so I'll evenly space points between the smallest value of x1 and the, uh, or I guess, yeah, x1, and the largest value of the x1. Uh, and then likewise, I'll take the, for the, the v, I'll, uh, I'll go from the smallest to the largest, and, you know, evenly spaced uh, 30 points, or uh, however many grid points you pass in. So the mesh grid function is going to take the, these, this vector of points. Uh, let me actually just show you what this looks like. Now we can take this right here. Very good. Oh, we didn't define grid points. We'll do that real quickly. Grid points. Let's make it. No, let's make it thirty. Okay, so that that's going from the smallest uh, value in, in this this matrix, uh, in, the, in the first column of this matrix, to the, to the largest value in the first column of this matrix, and creating thirty points in between. Um, and and likewise, I would just go ahead and pull in this one here. 
Oh, sorry. All right, so then I do that for V. Um, and now if I take mesh grid, it's going to take every combination of these pairs of points, sort of the, the Cartesian product, um, and essentially build out the grid of, of uh, all the coordinates. So if I look at uh, how to do this, uh, so I look at XU, so it's going to be a matrix uh, of all of the, the, uh, the X1 coordinates for each point on this, this 2D grid. Um, so I can uh, combine these together in this command here, uh, and this might actually be an easier way to think about this data. Uh, oof, I just overrode my X, that's unfortunate. Um, so now, now I have a, a, a set of X values. This is a new giant X matrix that tries all possible combinations, really, uh, 30 by 30 combinations of X uh, uh, for every, you know, every Cartesian product pair of those. Okay. So that, that's going to create a, a grid of test points, and I can use that to evaluate, evaluate my function. Now, I've messed up my x, so I'll have to go fix that. All right, so go back up here, re-import my x. Very good. Okay, so I've made my plotting function, um, and then it's going to just run my function f on all those test points, and I'm going to construct a surface with all the uh, the u the the you know the the values for x uh, x1 the values for x2 and the predicted values um, from my model here good all right so now uh, this is going to create a surface that, that uh, follows that so I can now plot the surface of my model and there it is so what do we got here so we got our points and our predicted model that is supposed to go through those points it does not go through those points why doesn't my model go through my data there's, there's a problem. So think about it for a moment. Uh, what, what's missing with this model? So to get a little bit of a hint as to what's going wrong, uh, let's actually do the following. I'm going to put uh, an extra point on this plot. So I've created this cyan point. It's a little sphere. And that point, I've put that point at the location 0, 0, 0. So it's at the origin in this three-dimensional space. So you actually click on this point right here, it's 0, 0, 0. Uh, and you'll see the plane passes that through that point. And in fact, any plane I might fit this way is going to be forced to pass through that point. So it's hard to get a plane that lives up with my data when it's stuck uh, going through the origin. So why is it stuck going through the origin? Well, if I look at the way my model is set up, uh, here is my model. I've taken theta 1 times x1 plus theta 2 times x2. Uh, you notice I forgot to add the ones column, right? And so without the ones column, the only thing I can do when x1 and x2 are zero for any choice of my theta is predict zero, because there's no uh, constant term to lift this plane up. So we need this theta zero term, uh, this constant term to, to lift the plane up. And one way to do that is to stick with this linear formulation. So I have to take a, a, a coefficient uh, times a feature um, in my, my uh, covariate matrix. So I, I don't have a constant term in, in the kind of naive formulation of this. And so what we do is we just add a feature that's all one. right? So then we can stick with this simple uh, mathematical expression and, and get the desired result. So in the previous lecture, we talked about a function called all, uh, add ones column, and it's using the NumPy horizontal stack operation to uh, insert all ones column. So if I have x, this is my original x matrix, if I add the ones column to that matrix, I get the following. So I've added a column of all ones. Now, if I resolve my, uh, you know, use the, the, the solve the normal equations from before um, with the add ones column on my x matrix, I now get three parameters. This is the d plus one, so it's a two-dimensional thing. Here, are my uh, d one. Here's my uh, or my uh, uh, slope one, slope two, uh, and here's that that offset that constant term. Okay, so this is my theta 0, theta 1, theta 2. Okay, uh, let's see. So I, I can now uh, actually compute the uh, theta hat. So I'm going to construct this once more. I'm going to find a model function uh, that will automatically append the ones uh, column to my x and then multiply by theta hat. And I need this so that I can use my visualization code, which is going to take a function, the model uh, 
the, the model append one or my model function here and pass it just x without the ones. So I need to, to append the ones to the x before I, I actually run my, my prediction. All right, so what do we get? Up, oh, zoomed a bit. Zoom back in. So here's our plane, and our plane nicely goes through our data set. That's not bad. So uh, with a little bit of, of uh, basic math uh, and, and manipulating our, our matrices, we're able to get a plane that, that pretty nicely fits this data set. Um, you might be looking at it and saying, there's some more structure I could go after, and, and don't worry, we'll go after that structure in, in a later lecture. Uh, but but this is not a bad starting point for our model. Um, it's pretty close to the to the underlying data. All right. Now, so I want to talk about how we would do this in Scikit-Learn. So first, what is Scikit-Learn? Um, Scikit-Learn is probably maybe one of the most widely used machine learning packages in Python. Uh, certainly for classic machine learning techniques. And the reason why is it has a large number of different machine learning algorithms that you can very easily apply to your data. Uh, and in particular, they all follow, follow a fairly similar structure. So changing from one algorithm to the next is just sort of changing uh, the, the class of, of model that you've used. Uh, and to, to see why, um, this is sort of the structure of all the, the scikit-learn models. So first you have to uh, d create an instance of a model type. So this could be a linear regression model, or it might be some super cool model type that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, once you have an instance of that model type, Oh, sorry. Uh, once you have an instance of that model type, uh, you can then call the fit function on that model, passing it data, uh, in this case, maybe the x and y data. Um, it doesn't have to have a y value. We'll talk about models that won't have, that maybe only take one, one, uh, one argument. Uh, and then you can call the predict function, and it will then render predictions on uh, any new data set. Uh, so here's data frame two, but it could also render predictions on the original data as well. Uh, and so if I didn't like the super cool model, I could replace that with linear regression, and the rest of the code would still probably work. So that makes it easy to try models, and, and that's all it is to, to train a model, that three steps. Uh, I, I will note there's this args, and we'll talk a bit more about the arguments we'd have to pass in the construction model. Um, in fact, we'll do that right now with linear regression. All right, so linear regression model uh, is as I, we've said in previous lectures, probably one of the more widely used models in machine learning or in, in data science. Uh, and it's simply importing it from the scikit-learn linear models uh, module. There's actually a bunch of different models in the linear modules, models, uh, linear model modules. Uh, and, and throughout this class, we'll, we'll touch on a few of these, perhaps uh, ridge regression, and lasso. Um, but there are many different ways to build these linear models. Uh, we're starting with the simplest, the least squares. Okay, so we import our linear model. So now the steps. So step one is create an instance of this model type. So we're using linear regression. We have to set arguments. Um, I believe by default, the uh, yeah, it's set to true. So it's going to automatically add our constant term for us. Um, but we don't have to, so we could set that to false. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. All right, uh, good. So I've defined my model. Now I call the fit function. I'm going to pass it in the uh, synthetic data x1 and x2, um, and I'm going to take my synthetic data and I'll pass in the y column as well. As before, I'm going to pull it. I'm going to treat it as a column vector, so I put an extra set of uh, of brackets around the y, so this will actually return a column vector. Good. That's it. That uh, internally ran a solve routine, or uh, in some cases, it might use an iterative solver to find the the least squares uh, loss minimizing parameters or the least the parameters that minimize the least squares loss. Uh, and we're done, so we've trained a model. So now I can say predict, passing it, in this case, the original training data, but I could pass it in other data as well and make predictions. So in this particular case, I'm gonna predict for x1 and x2 uh, the, the values in my model. I'll call that y hat as my, my predicted value, and I'll store that back in my original uh, data frame. So now I can actually look at y and y hat right beside each other. So you have x1, x2, here's the observed y, and here's what I predicted using this uh, linear model. And because the predict function behaves just like our earlier predict function that we had handwritten ourselves, uh, we can now just pass model.predict into our, the visualization code and it will generate predictions and visualize our lost surface. And not surprisingly, it looks identical to the, the hand-implemented uh, linear regression that we, we just used a moment ago. So again, it, it pretty closely fits our data. All right, so a quick note on terminology. Uh, this fit intercept argument that we set to this linear regression model, 
that sort of behaves, or in fact is, a, an example of a hyperparameter. Uh, so we use the word parameter a lot in this class. Parameters are typically the things we're going to be uh, estimating or fitting from our data. Um, there are parameters, hyperparameters, that we, we choose uh, ourselves. So th these are not things we're going to try to fit to data. Typically, they're things we're going to decide up front, and they'll dictate more the structure of the model rather than its parameterization. So fit intercept is adding an additional parameter to the model. It's not something we're going to optimize. It's a decision that we make in designing the model itself. So we set fit intercept to false. That will remove that constant term. So as before, I'll create just another uh, another a, another linear regression model with fit intercept to false. I will fit the data uh, in this second line here, and we can actually plot what this new model looks like. And you might have guessed already, this will go through the origin again. Very good. So that was the basics of, of how to use scikit-learn. Now that you have that, we can actually try a more advanced technique. In the lecture before the uh, uh, mid-semester checkpoint, uh, we talked a little about kernel ridge regression, or what I called uh, kernel regression. Uh, that's actually a package in uh, scikit-learn as well. Uh, so we're going to create a, a kind of a, a super model, a more advanced model using this kernel uh, ridge technique. Um, and in class, we also talked about how you had to set a kernel function for this. So we'll use the RBF kernel function, which stands for radial basics, uh, radial basis functions. So we create a, an RBF model. Um, and so I can show you what an RBF model looks like. So that's it. So I create the model here and I fit it just as before, except I've replaced kernel ridge or I've replaced, replaced the linear regression component or linear regression class with the kernel ridge class. All right, so what does this model look like? What does an RBF model look like? Nice. So the RBF model is a non-parametric model. It's capable of fitting more complex surfaces. And so we've plotted it here, and it's curvy, and it's able to actually very closely reflect the data. All right, so we're getting much closer to our underlying data. Is this good? Maybe. It sort of depends on, on what we want to do in the long run. Um, there aren't any weights that we can meaningfully interpret right now, so this model is much more complex. Um, but it does give us a, a fairly good fit to the data. Yeah, it's very close. OK, so that is the setup, or that is the, the use of scikit-learn. Um, that is all that I want to cover in this notebook. Uh, this is going to be part of a, a sequence of uh, notebooks that I will post for Thursday's lecture. Um, so this is a setup for scikit-learn. The next thing we'll get to is how to potentially fit this data without having to resort to kernel uh, ridge regression, uh, instead to actually use just linear models to fit this nonlinear surface.